Hello friends. For over 4,000 years, the pyramids reigned as the pinnacle of human achievement, defying all limitations of its era. Imagine the passage of time, the Great Pyramid standing tall amid the scorching heat of summers, weathering ferocious storms, enduring torrential rains that threatened to wash away all traces of its existence. Yet, it remains resolute, defying the ravages of time and the forces of nature. Now, let your mind wander to a time when technology was underdeveloped, when cranes, bulldozers, and modern marvels were mere dreams of the future. Imagine a world devoid of the conveniences we take for granted, yet, against all odds, these ancient architects and builders achieved the impossible. They harnessed the raw power of sheer will, ingenuity, and unyielding determination to erect a monument that has left the world in perpetual awe. But how was it done? How did they move those colossal stones, amounting to a total weight of staggering six million tons, without the aid of machinery or even the simple wheel? Let's explore this in today's video. As we venture further into the past, the task of unraveling historical events becomes increasingly challenging. The Great Pyramid of Giza is believed to have been constructed around 2560 BC. Its creation is attributed to Pharaoh Khufu, the second ruler of Egypt's fourth dynasty. However, details about Khufu and his reign are shrouded in debate and uncertainty. Historians offer conflicting estimates, ranging from 23 to over 60 years of his reign. Situated on the western bank of the majestic River Nile, the Great Pyramid of Giza is not alone in its grandeur. The site boasts two additional pyramids, forming a trio of remarkable structures. The Pyramid of Khafre, believed to be made by Khufu's son, stands as the second largest pyramid in Egypt and lastly, we encounter the Pyramid of Menkor, believed to be constructed by Khafre's son. While a total of 118 pyramids of diverse shapes and sizes are said to have existed, the ravages of time and weathering have taken their toll and therefore, many have succumbed to erosion, leaving only a handful in a well-preserved state. Now let us face the first question of the video, that is, why were the pyramids built? The answer lies in a common purpose shared by many such structures that is, they served as tombs. Inside these pyramids, the pharaohs were laid to rest. Ancient Egyptians held a firm belief in the afterlife and to prepare for this spiritual voyage, the pharaohs commissioned grand tombs during their reigns. Upon their demise, the pharaoh's bodies were meticulously mummified and placed within wooden or stone coffins, and these coffins were stored in these pyramids, housed with abundant provisions such as food, treasures, jewelry, furniture, and clothing intended for use in the afterlife. You may wonder how we can be certain of this purpose behind the construction of the pyramids. There are two primary reasons, my friends. Firstly, various inscriptions and texts found on coffins and other pyramids provide us with insights into ancient customs and beliefs. Secondly, the majority of historical pyramids in Egypt and Sudan have been identified as tombs. However, when it comes specifically to the Great Pyramid of Giza, no definitive evidence has been discovered to substantiate this theory, leaving room for alternative hypotheses to emerge. One particularly popular theory that has gained attention suggests that the Great Pyramid served as an ancient power plant capable of generating electricity. Advocates of this idea propose that the ancient Egyptians possessed advanced technological knowledge, including the harnessing of electricity. To support their claim, they point to certain ancient Egyptian artwork found on temple walls, which they interpret as evidence of early light bulb prototypes. They argue that the Egyptians had indeed invented such technology, which, regrettably, was subsequently lost over time. Yet, it is crucial to note that these conspiracy theories often emerge due to a lack of substantial evidence, and their logical coherence is often questionable. If ancient Egypt truly possessed light bulbs, why is there a lack of supporting evidence? In reality, the artwork in question depicts mythological narratives from ancient Egyptian culture, rather than technological advancements. However, another curious theory has been put forth by American politician Ben Carson in 1998. According to his personal theory, 
Carson suggested that the pyramids were constructed by none other than Joseph, the father of Jesus Christ, to serve as granaries for storing crops. My own personal theory is that Joseph built the pyramids in order to store grain. Now, this assertion highlights the tendency for politicians to promote ideas that cater to religious beliefs, which is a driving force behind some conspiracy theories. Nevertheless, it is important to emphasize that historians widely agree that the Great Pyramid of Giza was undeniably built as a tomb. The prevailing belief during that era was that a grand tomb, replete with treasures and provisions, would ensure a prosperous afterlife for the pharaoh. Now let us face the most pressing question, how were these magnificent pyramids constructed? Truly, this remains the most enigmatic aspect surrounding these colossal structures. How did people manage to construct such a towering monument, reaching 147 meters in height, utilizing enormous stones weighing anywhere between 2.5 to 80 tons? And how were these stones expertly stacked upon one another, without the aid of wheels? Moreover, how was all of this accomplished within a mere 20 year span? Yes, my friends, the Great Pyramid of Giza was said to be completed in just two decades. Numerous theories abound concerning the construction process, but let us avoid delving into bizarre conspiracy theories. However, before we explore these theories, it is crucial to dispel a common misconception perpetuated in films. These cinematic portrayals often depict laborers toiling under harsh conditions, enduring abuse and merciless whippings from their overseers. You may have witnessed such depictions in various movies. For a long time, the prevailing belief was that slaves were responsible for constructing the pyramids. This notion was first proposed by Herodotus, a Greek historian from the 5th century BC. However, we now know that this belief is inaccurate and the truth is that the individuals who built these awe-inspiring pyramids were highly skilled laborers. They were not subjected to starvation or abuse, on the contrary, they were generously provided with abundant food. In fact, they enjoyed better nourishment and physical well-being than the average Egyptian citizen of that era. These skilled laborers resided in cities located near the construction site and various communities rallied around them, offering support throughout the different seasons. For instance, when farmers were not occupied with their agricultural duties, they would lend a hand in the construction during their free time. This national endeavor unified the citizens of the kingdom, who displayed unwavering loyalty to their pharaoh. Approximately 20,000 to 30,000 workers dedicated themselves to the construction of the Great Pyramid of Giza, toiling for 10 hours a day. Now let us delve deeper into the fascinating topic of construction. Enormous quantities of materials were employed in building the pyramids, approximately 5.5 million tons of limestone, 8,000 tons of granite, and 500,000 tons of mortar. Most of these materials were sourced from the surrounding areas, with some being transported from southern Egypt, which was approximately 800 kilometers away from the site. The question arises, how were these rocks precisely cut? It is believed that copper, the prevalent metal of the time, was used to fashion tools. For breaking the harder granite rocks, dolerite was employed. Innovative techniques were employed, such as identifying cracks and crevices within the rocks and inserting wooden wedges soaked in water. As the rocks absorbed the water, the wedges would expand, causing the rocks to split apart. Now, let us turn our attention to the pivotal matter of stone transportation. In an era without wheeled carts or vehicles, how were these massive stones moved? One plausible theory suggests that rafts were constructed and utilized to transport the stones from the quarries, utilizing the floating capabilities of the river. Once the stones arrived at the pyramid site, they were stacked upon one another using sledges, maneuvered over damp ground. An intriguing theory, discovered in a 2014 study, shed light on this process. The basis of this theory lies in a painting discovered in the tomb of Jehudihot, which dates back to around 1900 BC. The painting depicts 170 individuals pulling a statue on a sledge, employing ropes for the task. You can see here that a man is pouring water onto the sand in front of the statue. Initially, archaeologists believed this was a ceremonial ritual, however, 
Astrophysicist Daniel Bonn and his team conducted experiments and found that a specific ratio of water to sand, approximately 2% to 5%, reduces the friction between the ground and the object being pulled. This discovery revealed that wet sand facilitated the movement of objects on sledges. Once we grasp the methods of stone transportation, the next question naturally arises, how are these hefty stones lifted without the aid of heavy machinery? In ancient Egypt during the 4th dynasty, pulley systems were not in use. However, they devised an efficient system of ramps to tackle the monumental task. In 2015, a team of archaeologists unearthed a 4,500-year-old wooden ramp in a quarry, shedding light on their construction techniques. Scholars proposed that the ramps were constructed as straight slopes from the ground to the pinnacle of the pyramid. To facilitate the movement of stones up the slope, they installed wooden pillars along the sides and utilized ropes around these pillars to hoist the stones. Ancient artwork supports this theory, as depicted on the screen. Physicist Joseph West put forward this idea in 2014. According to another theory, levers might have been utilized to stack the stones atop each other. In the illustration, you can see how it functions. By establishing a central point of higher elevation, a long pole with weights on the opposite side could be employed to lift, rotate, and position the stones as intended. Scholars believe that a similar mechanism, known as a shaduf, existed in Egypt for thousands of years and was used to draw water from the River Nile for irrigation purposes. These theories present fascinating possibilities, yet a challenge arises when considering the construction timeline. The Great Pyramid was completed within 20 years, and if we assume that 20,000 workers were involved in transporting each stone using these methods, a stone would need to be placed every three minutes, every day, throughout the year. This rapid pace of work seems highly unlikely. Hence, the mystery surrounding the precise construction techniques persists to this day. While both theories hold merit, they do not provide a complete explanation of the exact process. It is worth noting that the lower layers of the pyramid were laid without mortar, while mortar was added to the upper layers, enhancing the structure's stability which has enabled the Great Pyramid of Giza to withstand the test of time, enduring countless earthquakes over thousands of years. Lastly, we come to the final stage of pyramid construction, which involved the application of an outer layer made of fine whitish limestone. This layer imparted a brilliant white shine to the pyramids when illuminated by sunlight. Unfortunately, over the course of thousands of years, the outer layers have eroded from the pyramids of Khufu and Menkor. However, in the Pyramid of Khafur, a portion of the top layer can still be observed. Transitioning from construction to design, the intricacy of the pyramids is truly captivating. Did you know that these structures are precisely oriented to face the cardinal directions of north, east, south, and west? The margin of error in this alignment is incredibly small, just one fifteenth of a degree. The pyramids are believed to accurately point towards the four directions. But how was such precision achieved in an era devoid of compasses or modern technologies like GPS? One popular theory suggests that the alignment was achieved by observing the autumn equinox. During this astronomical event, the Earth's tilt allows for equal duration of day and night. At this time, the shadows cast on the ground align straight towards the east and west and, by utilizing this natural phenomenon, the Egyptians could match the degree of error in the pyramid's calculations with the degree of error in the shadows during the autumn equinox. Another theory revolves around the use of constellations where it is believed that the Egyptians employed the stars in the night sky to guide their designs. In 1989, Robert Bovell, an author and enthusiast of Egyptology, proposed the Orion Correlation Theory. According to this theory, the three pyramids in Giza are aligned in a manner that mirrors the arrangement of the three stars forming Orion's belt. Bovell argued that this alignment was intentional, asserting that the ancient Egyptians possessed knowledge of astronomy. He suggested that they would observe and study the stars at night, using their celestial observations to guide agricultural practices and determine the timing of various crops. However, historians consider the Orion correlation theory as a French theory, meaning it is not widely accepted within the mainstream. 
There are several points raised against this theory, such as the fact that the three pyramids were not planned or constructed simultaneously. Furthermore, when astronomers examined the alignment of the pyramids with the stars of Orion's belt in 1999, it was discovered that they do not align precisely. This discrepancy can be attributed to the natural movement of constellations over thousands of years. It is crucial to discuss this theory as an example of humans attempting to find patterns even where none may exist. In the absence of concrete evidence and a clear explanation, people tend to develop their own ideas, and if any connections can be made, they are often perceived as true. Taking this line of thinking to the extreme, some individuals propose that the pyramids were constructed by aliens, as they believe it would have been impossible for humans to create such structures. However, in my opinion, these theories contradict the principles of scientific thinking as they represent a shortcut method of providing an answer when a definite one cannot be found. It is more productive to acknowledge the known facts and clearly outline what remains unknown. This approach allows future generations of archaeologists and historians to conduct further research and uncover comprehensive solutions or explanations for these mysteries. I hope you found this episode informative. If you did, I kindly request you to like, subscribe, and share this video with your friends. I would love to hear your suggestions for future video topics in the comments section below. Thank you sincerely for your support. We will meet again very soon, but in the meantime, please feel free to explore my other videos. Goodbye.